Be heard, be active, be social. InfoWarriors worldwide are logging on to the newest activist social network, planetinfowars.com. I'm Christy Hightower. This week on Planet InfoWars, follow Alex Jones in the official Bilderberg 2012 InfoWarriors official site. You can watch up to the minute news, information, and live streams, all covering the globalist clandestine convention going on this week in Chantilly, Virginia. Create your own sites of activists and information on planetinfowars.com. It's Monday, June 4th. It's the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Coming up tonight. Tonight, looking back on the huge success of Occupy Bilderberg 2012, Alex Jones recaps last week's conquest in Chantilly, Virginia. Then, the CFR wants the U.S. Army to enforce domestic law and heavily armed troops are seen patrolling residential neighborhoods and even downtown areas of major U.S. cities. All that plus more coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Our top story on InfoWars Nightly News tonight, Bilderberg members label protesters, quote, cockroaches once again betraying their sneering arrogance towards the American people and the First Amendment, Bilderberg members attending their annual confab in Chantilly, Virginia this past weekend, referred to protesters outside as, quote, cockroaches, according to one of the hotel employees at the Westfields Marriott. So basically, Charlie Skelton, of course, as you know, the London Guardian writer, he was able to grab a word with one of the staff as they were exiting the hotel complex. And this is the quote. Here's what a hotel employee told me as he drove through the gates of the hotel. He lowered his window and beckoned me over. Quote, I want to know that they call you people cockroaches. I work in the hotel and they asked me if those cockroaches were still out there. They meant you. So pot calling kettle black springs to mind again. These are the people, you know, Charlie Rose, Henry Kissinger, Tony Blair, they scuttle away as soon as anyone confronts them about Bilderberg. They're the ones who scatter like cockroaches when the spotlight of truth is shined on them. And yet all those protesters, you know, traveled hundreds of miles, in some cases thousands of miles, great expense, standing around all day in the heat, proclaiming their right to self-determination. They're the cockroaches, according to Bilderberg. And so again, you know, it, it illustrates the sneering contempt with which the elite views us. It's not just some kind of arrogant dismissal that they don't care about us. It's literally blood boiling hatred. Remember the other story we had a couple of days before that uh, conversation in the hotel lobby, Bilderberg members wishing to see all the protesters outside loaded on a plane and have it crash. That's literally what they were discussing outside as they were arriving for the Bilderberg meeting. So they, I mean, they hate it. They hate the resistance to the agenda. We had stories beforehand from our source saying they hate the fact that it's, you know, record numbers of protests. And again, it just shows that resistance is victory. These are the most powerful people on the planet. And it irks the hell out of them to have 500 people stood outside bullhorning them. They can't stand it when people stand up to their agenda. They hate the resistance. So you've got, you know, you've got elected politicians in there, John Kerry, Mitch Daniels. They're calling the very people who put them in office cockroaches. This is the sneering arrogance of the elite. Remember back in 2010 in Spain, overheard conversation again, where they decried the fact that protesters could even afford to travel, that the scum could even afford to travel to protest Bilderberg. That's how much they hate us. It's not just a dismissive contempt. It's blood boiling rage. 
And again, this, is, this mainly comes out of this Guardian article which came out today, which has some other juicy little tidbits. Again, they've all come from the hotel staff because they're routinely treated rudely by Bilderberg members. It happens every year. So whereas they're sworn to secrecy in the first place, they're treated like crap by Henry Kissinger, and they eventually want to blow the whistle on their behavior inside the hotel. So this is where all this is, uh, has come from. And just picture it. These are some of the richest people on the planet. You know, we're talking heads of Google, Microsoft, um, top CEOs of top corporations. These guys aren't short of money. And yet, uh, how many tips did the hotel, hotel staff get? The answer is not a single one, not a single tip given by a Bilderberg member, according to this source who worked inside the hotel. So again, richest people on the planet don't even give anyone a tip showing their contempt for the scum public. We also learned from this inside source, the police didn't like what they were doing. Here's another quote. I was helping a cop move a security cordon near some trees when he lowered his voice and casually let slip. We don't support Bilderberg, trust me. That's what one of the cops told Charlie Skelton. So again, you know, it's very well saying it after the fact. If they don't like Bilderberg, why are they arresting people for stepping off the curb for a matter of seconds? I mean, join us, become an American hero. The jobs are probably toast anyway within a year, two years, because Bilderberg deliberately wrecked the US economy. So it's amazing why some of these people don't, you know, break the barriers and come forward. But this has got to be the best one out of this inside source from the hotel. While the likes of Kissinger and his uh, friends were slurping their soup. All the hotel staff were actually in the back watching our Ustream channel. Quote, we had a load of the hotel staff gathered around a computer in the back office watching Alex Jones and they're all rooting for him, said one source. So all the hotel staff treated like scum by Bilderberg who calls us cockroaches, uh, gave us the data dump on their behavior and then started watching our Ustream channel in the back room. And this is perhaps the most interesting leak, again, out of this inside hotel source. Quote, they don't just sit together in a big room. You've got the picture of them all in a huge conference room. That's not what happens. They have tons of separate rooms, and they split up for the meetings. The first ones are after 4.30 on Thursday. So again, this lends credence to the fact of what we've been saying all along, which is that Bilderberg is broken up into all these little working groups on different issues. This is where they create the consensus um, to implement policy as former NATO Secretary General Willie Clace admitted in a 2010 radio interview. So you've got one workshop on Syria, you'll have one on the Euro, one on China and Russia, another one on the carbon tax agenda. Each little agenda is split up into different working groups taking place in different conference rooms. This is how they communicate the consensus to be then implement, implemented by the individual attendees. So, you know, K Kagan, Romney's foreign policy advisor, said, uh, it's just people getting together for a nice dinner and a nice chat. I don't think so. People don't jet halfway across the world for a nice dinner, game of golf, and a nice chat. And this revelation in particular shows that they are creating the consensus to implement policy in the global arena, that affects us all. Major, major revelations from this inside source, and it's all contained in that article, uh, where they call us all cockroaches, which we'll go on to discuss more in this show. I'm gonna go to a video now out of Bilderberg. Alex Jones calls end to diplomatic immunity at Bilderberg. Uh, and th in this clip, Alex explains how the purpose of diplomatic immunity as it was initially defined by the government is now being abused by the likes of Bilderberg. Let's go to the clip. There was a bunch of us standing there in the corner and they and what they did and a couple of them ran or one of them ran this ran the, uh, the, the, the the light it was red and went through and the cops sat there and watched them do it and then there's other you know why I'm gonna make a point I want a federal law, we used to have this, where you can't have diplomatic immunity except in your embassy. It started out where countries said, we have embassies with our state secrets under treaties. If you'll let us have an embassy, it means you can't come in and it's our sovereign land. 
Then, about 60 years ago, the Rockefellers pushed for it to get Interpol and other systems set up within Interpol where the diplomats, the head diplomats, couldn't have their pouches messed with. Okay, then it was their suitcase. Then it was their car. Now it's their person. They run, they've had cases where they run people over in New York, it's happened in Houston, and they don't even get in trouble killing people. Yeah. They've been caught with sex slaves, they've been caught uh, dealing drugs, they've been caught doing whatever they want. That's why the police can't stop them, because they have diplomatic immunity. Okay? Now, everybody keeps wondering why the police can't stop these people. Everybody keeps wondering why the police can't stop these people. run people over and why they're above the law? Because they are, until we change the law. These people, most of them, have diplomatic immunity. <clears throat> now, diplomatic immunity started hundreds of years ago where countries like France and England said, okay, you can have a consulate, but it's our sovereign land, and you agree to never come in there, or we won't build a consulate in your country for diplomatic reasons. Then in the last hundred years, it was diplomatic pouches for just had diplomats. Now it's for all the sub-diplomats. Then it's their cars. Then it's their persons. And they have been caught all over the United States, but especially New York. This is the UN diplomats in all these countries, diplomats and all their minions, with sex slaves in their houses, with drugs, uh, with all sorts of crimes, and nothing can be done to them. So, we need to change the laws in this country. These police probably haven't even thought of that, but that's what they're told. They can't do anything to these people because it's a diplomatic, illegal event. That's why it violates law because it's secret. It's run by private interests with diplomats and heads of state. This thing is completely illegal under the Logan Act, and these people have all got diplomatic immunity, complete federal law. That's a fraud, and it needs to be changed because they're expanding diplomatic immunity to inland ports where they can ship drugs in, you name it. They're trying to expand it to carbon taxes where the private companies dealing in carbon taxes, and that needs to change. Everybody out there watching, diplomatic community. Think about the New World Order, the UN, these global banks. Why did they ever get in trouble? Why can John Corzine steal billions at MF Global? Because it's all done under globalist agreements where they say they're above the law and pass all these unconstitutional laws making us slaves. They throw piles of laws on the citizens while writing all these new regulations which aren't law saying they're God. And now it's coming to a head with the United Nations and NATO. And if anybody didn't believe this out there, just search. Obama says UN gives him directive for war, not Congress. Or Panetta, Secretary of Defense, tells Congress that the United Nations gives him orders. This country has been taken over if we put up with it. It's a total foreign global corporate takeover. And the scum in this building have been so powerful for over 60 years, no mainstream media would report on it. But now, they've been forced to in the Associated Press, they've been forced to in the Washington Post, and hundreds of other papers, and thousands worldwide. We have exposed these criminals. We have blown their criminal operation wide open. Jim Tucker, Bilderberg wants Mitch Daniels as Romney's VP. According to veteran Bilderberg sleuth Jim Tucker's inside source, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels' presence at the 2012 Bilderberg Group meeting indicates that he is the elite's choice pick to become Mitt Romney's running mate. According to the source, Bilderberg members are eager to dissuade the Romney camp from choosing Kentucky Senator Rand Paul as VP fearing that Paul's constitutionalist stance will act to derail the agenda for increased centralization of power into a system of global governance. So it looks like it's now in the veep stakes, a straight race between Daniels and Rubio, who of course was discussed before the Bilderberg meeting. Now Mitch Daniels, as we've talked about, former Eli Lilly head during the 90s, 
instrumental in being the head of a PR campaign that deflected all the negative press attention about uh, the horrible side effects and suicides from Prozac. Of course, he's also intimately tied in with the George Bush, Dan Quayle, neocon power structure. So according to Tucker's source, he's the current favorite. But then, of course, we've got Marco Rubio, uh, Florida senator, who's proven his worth as a globalist attack dog, um, calling for the invasions of Syria and Iran. And of course, he gave a Council on Foreign Relations speech back on May 31st in New York. So Romney's expected to announce his VP choice a few weeks before the RNC in August, and the current odds uh, are showing that Rubio's in second favorite position with uh, seven to two, whereas uh, Daniels is quite a way down the list at 16 to one. So it's something of a long shot, uh, according to Tucker's source. But I mean, according to, according to what he's saying, Daniels is favorite to be Romney's VP. I still think it, it looks more like Rubio because he's been the choice for a long time. He's also given speeches at several internationalist confabs. Um, so we'll wait to see who it is, but Romney's expected to announce a few weeks before the RNC in August, and those two look like the prime choice candidates for the elite. Uh, of course, Bilderberg picked vice presidential candidates in the last two US elections, 2004, with uh, John Edwards, of course, and 2008, when Bilderberg member James A. Johnson uh, picked Obama's running mate. So again, just a game of golf, just a nice dinner, according to Romney's foreign policy advisor, nothing to see here, just picking vice presidential candidates once again. I'm gonna go to another clip now, and this is some of the loudest bullhorning you've ever heard, uh, literal cascading booming effect, Alex, Jones, Bullhorns, Bilderberg at night. Let's go to the clip. It's absolutely got to be done. Just some nighttime strafing, you know, that's what we're doing. It's very fun. I'm going to come back one more time and I'll jump out with these folks that I told them I would and then, and then we'll go. But right now, let's go ahead and drive by. Those are true patriots right there. Battling the globalists and building it. We're coming back, don't worry. New World Order, we are aware of your criminal activities. We are aware of your world government. We are aware of your New World Order. And no amount of technocratic garbage is going to protect you. No amount of bureaucracy, no amount of police state, no amount of fluoride in the water, no amount of vaccine, mercury, and cancer viruses is going to stop humanity from exposing you. You are criminals, and we know it, and your world government is defeated! You will fail, New World Order! You will fall! Again, amazing footage from Bilderberg 2012. Some of the loudest bullhorning you've ever seen. Record protesters. Uh, they got right up close to the hotel where Bilderberg had their little working group meeting, so I'm sure disrupted their agenda. 
And we're going to go to some more videos soon. But moving on, Bilderberg 2012, protesters hail their hero, Alex Jones. This is out The Guardian. As the demonstrators targeting the Bilderberg Conference of International Leaders in Chantilly, Virginia, drew to a close on Sunday, dozens of protesters gather around one man hoping for a picture or an autograph. God bless you, Alex, said a number of others as they stood outside a service entrance to a heavily guarded Marriott. So... Again, Guardian with fair coverage. Of course, we, we had Alex Jones still today on the cover of the Drudge Report with the word, you know, hero underneath. That's certainly going to help out InfoWars. Biggest driver of news traffic in the world, of course, outranks Twitter and Facebook combined. Uh, and obviously picking up the Guardian story as well, which is, is a general appraisal of the protest movement as it was witnessed over this past weekend. So again, the, the Guardian should be applauded. They've actually done the job of a, a real news outlet and provided some balanced coverage of an, a, an event of international importance, unlike the fake alternative media wannabe websites like The Daily Caller and Glenn Beck's The Blaze. I mean, look at Beck, for example. You know, he's got hundreds of thousands of paying subscribers. He's got a multi-million dollar media empire he could have sent two, three, four writers to Bilderberg. He could have got bombshell revelations. He could have been all over the Drudge Report. What did he choose to do? Well, he got some hack to write some pathetic four-paragraph blog droning on about Alex doing an analogy about gold leaf-covered babies. Then you've got Daily Caller, on the other hand. I wrote an article about this on uh, Friday. Some Tucker Carlson minion shows up at the protest. Uh, instead of asking questions as to why 120 global power brokers are meeting in secret, he turns it on Alex and tries to ambush Alex. And even the Daily Caller's own readers, in response to the article, just droves of them, hundreds, pointing out how pathetic it was. Uh, and this is, you know, the website's run by Tucker Carlson. This is the guy who thinks Bilderberg is a bunch of retired State Department officials, you know, the completely irrelevant bow-tie-wearing moron who freely chastises Alex when he's at a safe distance. When Alex comes to D.C., he doesn't want anything to do with him, sends out his minions to try and harass him. And again, Carlson, uh, Daily Caller, Glenn Beck's The Blaze, it's just the fake right hand of the equation with, you know, Lawrence... I'm too lazy to do anything but read a teleprompter O'Donnell on the fake left. So at the end of the day, it's not the blaze, it's not the daily caller being linked on the powerhouse Drudge Report website, biggest driver of global news traffic in the world. It's Alex Jones, it's Infowars.com. You know, it's all these other great alternative media websites because they actually covered the event. They actually covered the event of 120 global power brokers because they thought that was kind of more important and asking stupid sophomoric questions and trying to ambush people. So I think that tells you all you need to know about who's got the pathetic coverage on one hand, on one hand and uh, who's getting the job done on the other, breaking all the big stories, getting all the inside scoops. It's Alex Jones, it's Infowars, it's Guardian, it's all the other great websites that have actually bothered to cover the meeting of 120 power brokers instead of making childish jokes about it and trying to ambush people with stupid questions. So the proof's in the pudding of who got all the traffic on the coverage, and I think it's obvious who that was. Here's another one out of The Guardian. Bilderberg 2012, guess who's coming to dinner? Yesterday at 4 p.m., a limousine with a police motorcade entered the rear entrance of the Bilderberg Hotel. Heavy security, heavyweight politician. Let the guesses commence. Was it Romney getting the green light for presidency? Was it Hillary nipping in to sign off on Iran? So again, just as back in 2008, when for a brief time the security was stepped up for the arrival of some important guests, of course we soon found out that was Obama and Hillary, it happened again this year. We've yet to discover who that important guest actually was. Um, doubt it was Romney. I think he was over in Los Angeles doing a speech. Could have been Obama. He was definitely in D.C. giving this ridiculous portrait unveiling with George W. Bush and his wife. So it could have been Obama. It could have definitely been somebody from the Obama administration. Of course, they're routinely represented at Bilderberg back in 2009 
uh, an Obama representative went and met with Bilderberg. So definitely an important guest arrived uh, during the event, and we'll probably get to find out who that was at some point in the near future. Another video now. Bilderberg 2012, Alex talks with Webster Tarpley. And uh, this is causing quite the storm on YouTube because uh, apparently, unbeknownst to us all, Ron Paul has become the center of all evil, according to Webster Tarpley. So let's go to the clip. I, I was out of the gate on the 10th of January with this, the 10th of January. My proof is, if you watch those Republican debates and you can't see that Romney is there to be, is, is being helped by, Rand Paul, by Ron Paul, you don't have any political judgment. In other words, it's Paul ran five different ads against me. That was an establishment Democratic talking point. It was the first one. It was mild. It was that he was a flip-flopper. Everybody else was a criminal or whatever he was. They are. But Romney was only a flip-flopper. Let's take the Michigan primary. The, the function of Ron Paul is to take 10 or 15 percent of anti-establishment Republican voters and put them in the deep freeze, put them in the, in the candidate who's never going to win, can't get the nomination. Romney's problem was that the Republicans is maybe 40 percent people, you know, country club, plutocrats, whatever, who would vote for Romney. That leaves 50, 60 percent who would vote for an anti candidate. So what Ron Paul does is take 15 percent, sometimes 17 percent of the anti-establishment Republican votes off the table. Now, Michigan primary, look at a couple of others, but Michigan is the clearest. Romney won Michigan by a paper-thin margin. That's the Ron Paul effect. Now, Ron Paul didn't win Michigan, but he did pay with his money for anti-Santorum uh, uh, election ads. So you're in the presence of a separation. This is not real. Ron Paul is famous as a nepotist. My figures are that he's got 60 people plus of his relatives, relatives from the congressional office payroll or on the payroll of his campaign. Jesse Benton, that a lot of people in the Ron Paul campaign tell me they can't stand, is to Ron Paul's granddaughter, I believe, right? And remember, the entire purpose of the campaign is nepotism. It's to feather the nest for little Rand so that he has a future. And again, let's look at who this is. This is Romney. Now, people, I think the, the better people who are interested in Ron Paul, they don't really understand economics, although they should. So Obama's going to save us? No. no. Uh, the, the, the Bilderberg people are, are turning uh, for Romney. Romney, Mitch Daniels. But they just... The word I've got is Romney is in from all the big power brokers. Yeah, that's, that's the Bilderberg. Bilderberg is throwing their weight, which is considerable, on the side of Romney, Mitch Daniels. But now you, you want to get me away from this, uh, this, this last point oh, that I had. Uh, I'm not trying to get you away from anything, Webster. I came over here to interview... Uh, Jim Kurt, and I, and, and I nicely, you're my friend, I said I'd interview you, you were interrupting, telling me shut up, and now you're saying I want to keep you for the audience, that's bull****. Now listen, that's bull****. No, 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 I'm just saying, I'm interviewing you, I'm not trying to censor you, but I have views on all this, that's all. For heaven's sakes, I'm not trying to shut you down. Make your point. I want to get your point on Al-Qaeda, Syria, Libya, Russia. The Russian at the meeting. I want to talk about that and so this obsession about Ron Paul. A vote for Ron Paul was a vote for Romney. And this is the tragic reality. And I sympathize with people who were, were duped in this regard. Remember, Ron Paul vote, runs as an anti-war candidate, even though he voted for the Afghan war. You should remember, Ron Paul voted for the Afghan war. Like Kerry, he was for the Afghan war before he was against it. Now he's against it. Now let's look at Romney. If you're supporting Romney, what are you going to get? The biggest warmonger. Romney is out there saying that Russia is the main strategic enemy of the United States, and Romney is out there saying that he doesn't want the option to attack Iran in, 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 on the table. He wants it in his hand. So a vote for... Well, there you go, Webster. Ron Paul's a warmonger. Two days after 9-11, he says, okay, use of force Afghanistan to get bin Laden. Now, now you're saying he's a warmonger. He's been against all these he damn wars. The war. He voted for the Afghan war. Are, Barbara Lee voted for I think this is sophistic, Tarpley. I'm very Ron embarrassed. Lee voted against it. Ron Paul voted for it. You look for a statesman. Barbara Lee is a statesman. Ron Paul didn't make the. Grade. The difference is you have a belief in the state to empower. Ron Paul doesn't. You're dodging the issue. If the big thing with Ron Paul is that he's against imperialist wars, 
How come he voted for the Afghan war? So there you have it. Big controversy on YouTube with that one. Uh, Webster Tarpley now thinks that Ron Paul is the center of all evil, even though for the past 20 odd years, he's opposed every NDAA, Federal Reserve, big banker piece of legislation, police state legislation, opposed the drones, opposed all of it, being the preeminent voice of liberty. But apparently, according to Webster Tarpley, he's now the center of all evil. So I'm sure we'll revisit that uh, in the coming days on Infowars.com. Anti-democratic world government advocate attends Bilderberg. Financial Times writer Gideon Reichman was in attendance at this year's 2012 Bilderberg Group conference, no doubt to further the agenda he advanced in a, de in a December 2008 FT article in which he argued that, quote, everything is in place for a dictatorial world government to be imposed by a technocratic elite. Now, if you've ever wanted to see just the perfect illustration of... Uh, you know, a ladder climbing, sniveling, elitist, tough snob wannabe, then it's Gideon Rackman. His pictures in this article arriving at Bilderberg. And he's been well rewarded by the global elite because this 2008 FT article, which of course is basically the voice of Bilderberg, he calls for a, a UN army to enforce global carbon taxes, said it should be based on the EU, and said that. Basically, it can only work if it's, quote, anti-democratic. This is the darling of Bilderberg. He's been rewarded almost every year since by attendance at the actual meeting. This is the guy who openly calls for authoritarian world government to be imposed by stealth. So basically, I sent him an email today because I noticed he was at Bilderberg challenging him to a debate. Let's have a debate about why an authoritarian world government imposed by stealth is so necessary. Here's the email I sent him. Don't expect a response, but here we go anyway. Gideon, I'm guessing your war criminal friend Henry Kissinger was receptive to the ideas outlined in your and now for a world government piece. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot over 100 of the world's power brokers jet halfway across the world for three days just for a nice dinner and a game of golf. That's according to Romney's foreign policy advisor. So when is your report on Bilderberg 2012 going to appear in the Financial Times? I know, I know, Wolfie, that's of course Martin Wolf, FT editor, Bilderberg member, would never allow such heresy. Were you one of the snobs labeling us all cockroaches? Come on, Gideon, there's still time for you to turn away from the dark side. I challenge you to a debate on the Alex Jones show. Do you have the balls? And judging by the fact that Whenever you mention Bilderberg to these scum, it's like holding up a, you know, a cross to a vampire or something. They turn and scatter like cockroaches. So I don't expect any response, but the challenge is there, Gideon. Uh, let's have a debate about all this and let's see if he acts like all the other cockroaches and uh, runs away like a big girl's blouse. Let's have a debate about it. Let's get it open on the air. The challenge is there, Gideon Rackman. Do you respond? Video now. The Bilderberg Exodus. This is where the uh, Bilderberg members all leave and are confronted by the protesters there outside the hotel. Let's go to this clip. You're going to jail, you New Orleans scum! We got you! We got you! Yeah! Well, catching some of the Bilderbergers on their way out. Hey, buddy, what's up? Which is what? But um, people getting arrested for stopping in the crosswalk or using the crosswalk. Right. Yeah. Okay, just to clarify, what he told me was at one point in time for a brief period, 
you were asked not to step in the crosswalk or use it because, I guess, cars were coming through or something like that. Right. So but now stopped. you're entitled to use the crosswalk as you normally would as a citizen. Okay. When? So you guys, are you are you going to help me out or? Uh, I'm not going to leave because, as far as I know, this is public property. Okay, I mean, they, they can yeah, ask. All I got to do is tell, yeah. tell my boss I yeah. asked you. And yeah, you he tell him you can ask all he wants. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank guys. you. All right. Sorry. And now we have another one coming up. It's just ours. So we'll show you just exactly what we've been doing here on this middle center island. Here he comes. Here he comes. Nobody step in the street. Oh, he didn't want to Nobody in the street. He's waiting for the light. Go home. Go home. Go home. You come back. You know what order, huh? Move in the crosswalk. Do not touch the car. Oh, you want to know what order, huh? Move in the crosswalk. Great video from Dan Dix there, Press for Truth TV. Uh, of all the protesters confronting Bilderberg members as they left, that's when they got some more great photographs, which we'll be putting on the website over the next few days. Syria regime change on Bilderberg agenda. We put this out on Saturday, but I wanted to get back into it because it's important. The presence of Syrian National Transitional Council head Basma Kodmani at the 2012 Bilderberg conference clearly indicates that power brokers at the elite confab will be discussing the effort to topple President Bashar al-Assad and install a NATO-friendly administration in the violence-stricken country. Kodmani is the head of foreign affairs with the SNC, a coalition of Syrian opposition groups based in Istanbul, Turkey. While at the Bilderberg meeting, she will be in the company, the esteemed company, of the likes of former Secretary of State and accused war criminal Henry Kissinger, Warhawk Richard Pearl, and Thomas E. Donilon, National Security Advisor for the Obama White House. So we've got this um, Syrian rebel transitional representative scuttling away to her little conference room to plot with Bilderberg about overthrowing another sovereign country. Brookings Institute, of course, the think tank that's laid out the plan in explicit detail to topple Syria for the globalists, they're represented at Bilderberg. She's no doubt going to be discussing things with them or has done over the past few days. And then, of course, the news that came out during the conference Bilderberg member and close friend of Kissinger, Fareed Zakaria, pushing on CNN a plan to starve Syrians to death as part of the uh, regime change humanitarian love mission. Of course, we had the Hula massacre happened uh, last weekend. Eyewitnesses said it was carried out by terrorists. That's being blamed on Assad's forces. Like it would be such a great global propaganda coup to go and massacre dozens of kids. But well, that's becoming the central hallmark on which all this is being built. It's, it's sounding very much like the uh, Hill and Knowlton Saddam incubator baby hoax. And of course, Susan Rice came out. This is the US ambassador who likes to openly make terrorist threats. If you don't stand down, you'll get more terrorist attacks. That's literally what she said a couple of weeks ago. We got Hillary Clinton coming out, another merchant of death. Both of them are threatening more military action. And Syria is definitely the next domino that they need to fall. And that's why this SNC Syria member was at Bilderberg this year. Word is they're planning a, a fake Saddam-style faux revolution statue toppling ceremony uh, in the middle of Damascus to try and fake senior military commanders in the Syrian army into the uh, false assumption that the end of the regime is near. They're trying to get them to defect by staging a fake statue toppling. Remember the one in Iraq? They claimed it was, you know, thousands of Iraqis in Baghdad. Turned out it was a handful led by Ahmed Shalabi, the, uh, the US stooge. So they're planning on some global media event like that to try and get military commanders to defect in Syria. There's also a plan in place to uh, shut down Syrian state TV so the opposition can monopolize the propaganda. 
And Bilderberg is firmly behind regime change in Syria, just as they were in Libya. Remember Sam Moritz last year in Switzerland, Bilderberg gave the, the green light to get the job finished in Libya. Uh, a few months later, Gaddafi was gone and the uh, friendly NATO-backed Al-Qaeda rebels were flying their black and white flag over courthouses and other centers of power in Libya. So it seems, again, history is repeating itself with Bilderberg moving firmly behind the agenda with the rest of the neocon establishment to attack Syria. Now, moving on to other news. CFR proposes using army to enforce domestic law. This is out of Infowars.com. The Council on Foreign Relations, the elite think tank long associated with globalist policymaking and subversion of the principles of the US Constitution, has published an article that proposes using the army to plan and carry out domestic law enforcement missions in the US. An article in the main Ju May June issue of CFR's official journal, Foreign Affairs, calls for the army to address challenges in the United States itself. That's a quote with the justification being to protect Americans from terrorist attacks. And this article is um, just goes into voluminous detail about the documented militarization of domestic law enforcement, which of course picked up from uh, 2008 onwards with the, the announcement that Northcom troops would be inside the US performing uh, crowd control, dealing with civil unrest. With now, of course, we've got routine urban warfare training drills involve, involving National Guard troops marching down UN, US streets. We had the picture a couple of months ago with the article uh, in Cruxton where they had the National Guard out there patrolling residential neighborhoods like it was nothing to worry about. Um, so again, this article goes into great detail about the domestic militarization of law enforcement. And now, of course, they're bringing that to the next level with the 30,000 drones in the sky. Related story here out of Infowars.com, which is up on DrudgeReport.com. EPA using drones to spy on cattle ranches in Nebraska and Iowa. Obama's Environmental Protection Agency is using aerial drones to spy on farmers in Nebraska and Iowa. The surveillance came under scrutiny last week when Nebraska's Congressional delegation sent a joint letter to EPA, EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson. So in the context of um, the comments made by Charles Krauthammer last month, you know, that the first American to shoot down a domestic drone will be a folk hero, it's sure looking like it's going to be a target-rich environment. Everybody's jumping on board. And uh, again... Everything we saw used against insurgents and terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan is now being enforced domestically. They were the ones getting body scanned, you know, put in biometric databases 10 years ago. They were the ones on the run from drones. Now it's the American people's turn to taste the tyranny that people in foreign countries have been experiencing uh, for decades. And we've stressed this point before. I mean, the federal government treats its own population as an enemy that needs to be conquered. That's implicit in all the documents that they've put out, labeling anybody who's even tangentially interested in politics or activism as a domestic extremist, as a threat. You know, pay cash for a coffee, you're a potential terrorist. And that, you know, that kind of mindset can only lead to uh, two outcomes, civil war, complete serfdom. That's why we're trying to peaceably inform and enlighten enough Americans to the point where they back off from doing it. It doesn't look like it's going to happen at the moment. They keep lurching forward with this domestic militarization drone army agenda. Now, of course, they've got the drones armed with taser guns, uh, non-lethal weapons to incapacitate protesters. So it's definitely being stepped up to the next level. But, of course, the, the resistance matches it in every facet. That's why you've got record gun sales, all-time record highs. That's why, as our friend Gideon Rackman, the Bilderberg member who I talked about earlier said, quote, people are reaching for their rifles in America's talk radio heartland. That's right, the Bilderbergers know that the resentment, the fury is building, and that's only going to increase uh, as this domestic militarization of law enforcement agenda rolls out from the major cities and beyond. InfoWorld's nightly news quote of the day. You are a den of vipers. I intend to rout you out. And by the eternal God, I will rout you out. If the people only understood 
the rank injustice of our money and the banking system, there would be a revolution before morning. That's President Andrew Jackson, who with rhetoric like that, of course, the seventh president of the United States, with talk like that, would have no doubt been labelled a cockroach by the elite of his day, just as the elite of our day label us cockroaches. I'm going to go to our last video now on InfoWars Nightly News, looking back at the huge success of Occupy Bilderberg 2012. Again, kudos to all the fantastic protesters out there who made this a record-breaking event in terms of protest numbers, in terms of just basic basically being loud, getting in Bilderberg members' faces, the bullhorn echo effect, all of it, the media coverage, the freak out by the fake alternative media, and of course the terror of Bilderberg now that they absolutely hate us, they can't stand being protested, they want us all to die in plane crashes and cause cockroaches. Something about that tells me we're starting to get under their skin. Let's go to the clip. I am a bit shell-shocked just by shaking thousands of hands in between bullhorning, filing reports, talking to uh, insiders and sources, and dealing with the police, it has been a circus of the last four days. Really, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were just wild. Uh, Saturday was uh, pretty darn wild as well. We've learned a lot of the inside scoop from Bilderberg 2012. Uh, the establishment is not pleased. The bullhorning was so loud that I'm even more deaf uh, than I was before. In fact, I've got to put a note here about bullhorning. I've got to tell you about this. We learned how to take megaphones and bullhorn into one and then to another. Not just everybody talking on different bullhorns, but have one person through a string of bullhorns, like something on a Dr. Seuss book, and it does something with the residents. Like when I scream in a bullhorn, it's even louder. It, it somehow puts out more sound. People don't understand that. It's not just talking into one, it's the yelling into one. I'm legendary for that, really discovering it. I'm sure others have discovered it as well. This, though, got so loud that it was causing me to have migraine headaches, and I would have to go lay down on the ground. I mean, it was so loud, Charlie Skelton of The Guardian said that he had to get away from it. And we were shaking the windows of it, because the one area where they have the conference area is the one area that sticks off the property to like 40 feet from the street. They put up these big fences and black tarps. People ripped those down, by the way. And it was shaking the building. And the first day, the police were really nice. Then some of the more younger people got there and yelled at them and stuff for no reason. And then they got a little bit of, uh, abusive back. And they were under orders. But by the time they all listened to my radio show, well, a lot of them were already listeners. We had that on video. And then they got in trouble saying they were. Nicest police I've ever seen anywhere. Uh, they're in Roanoke, Virginia, uh, the county there. Yeah, Fairfax County. I just called it Roanoke because that's where we're, <laughs> I'm. Man, my brain is fried. Fairfax County Police. And then today we were saying, who supports the Constitution? They're raising their hands. Who doesn't like those globalists in there? They're raising their hands. It was amazing. The, the, the police were looking into the Logan Act. They had iPads out looking at Bilderberg's statements and quotes about world government. And the, I would tell the cops, look up the UN telling Congress three months ago they now run the U.S. military. The cops looked it up and were freaking out. And they were looking up all the names. It was They were investigating, like we do. And by the end, they were absolutely on our side. It was, it was amazing. We'll be right back. Uh, big news straight ahead. Stay with us. I want to urge you again to check out planetinfowars.com. Of course, this is our big new social network. The kind of protest you saw at Bilderberg, we want to see that more often. We want to see it in ever greater numbers. And that's the place where you can go and network with other like-minded people. You can also put your own blog on there. You can have discussions. There's a dating section. You can meet like-minded people for relationships. And we put a lot of work into this. It's been many years in the making, and it's proven wildly popular already. Thousands and thousands of subscribers. It's all free. It's all for there. It's all there for you to use. So I urge you to visit planetinfowars.com. Of course, the other promotional vehicle that we have to mention because it funds our entire operation is prisonplanet.tv. Now the the uh, hours and hours of live streaming you saw at Bilderberg, that's not free. That costs a lot of money. In fact, I remember last year in Switzerland, we constantly had to ring up and demand extra data on our plan. 
because it was just costing thousands and thousands of dollars a day. Uh, you know, all the travel expenses, the hotel expenses. We're not funded by George Soros. We're not funded by the Kremlin. We're not funded by any government, state, or major corporation. We're funded by you, our subscribers at prisonplanet.tv. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing. You get a whole host of content, the Alex Jones Show, radio archives, uh, the nightly news archives, the live stream, speeches, special events, rants, behind-the-scenes stuff. It's all there in one place at prisonplanet.tv, and it helps fund our entire operation. So please subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I've been your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Continue to check out all the breaking news at InfoWars.com, and we will see you on the next edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Take care. globalist eugenesis control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die start purifying your water with pro pure my friends i've done a lot of research and the best gravity filter out there bar none is pro pure and it's available discounted at infowars.com its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth there's no priming required it's nsf 42 certified optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95 percent easy to set up and use doesn't require electricity purify water from lakes streams ponds and wells this filter system leaves in beneficial minerals which is key save money by not buying bottled water and avoid bpa that leaches from the plastic pro pure is the best gravity fed filter out there it's what my family uses infowars.com already has the lowest price on pro pure but if you add the promo code water at checkout you get an additional 10 percent off at infowars.com you can also call to order 888-253-3139 have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. Be heard, be active, be social. InfoWarriors worldwide are logging on to the newest activist social network, planetinfowars.com. I'm Christy Hightower. This week on Planet InfoWars, follow Alex Jones in the official Bilderberg 2012 InfoWarriors official site. You can watch up to the minute news, information, and live streams, all covering the globalist clandestine convention going on this week in Chantilly, Virginia. Create your own sites of activists and information on planetinfowars.com.